Now, if my battery saver asks me, like, what is beauty or the meaning of life, <laughs> I'll know that we've reached a certain uncanny valley. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Daniel Poole so we can share our experiences with Android 9 Pi. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO47. All right, so Android 9 um, definitely was a big surprise drop here in early August. Um, I, I remember back in the days when, like, Android used to launch with whatever the new Nexus phone was in, like, October or whatever, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think that was the norm for a while. Um and, and yeah, so like for most of the existence of Second Opinion, I could always kind of count on its anniversary being like right around, you know, when, when Android launches, because that was uh, the very first review that we did here on this show. But now we're like two months off. Um, <laughs> last year, they, they launched it on the day of the eclipse, um, oh. which I, I, I guess was kind of, you know, Android O, it was... They, I, yeah, it was an Oreo. They made it look like an eclipse and stuff, and so I guess they were riding that hype. Um, no idea why Android Nine launched like on August third or whatever it was this year. That was weird. Yeah, I didn't even thought about that. Um, last year with the eclipse, I'm in a lot of librarian Facebook groups, and that's all they were talking about was the eclipse. And so I think I completely mm-hmm. missed updates <laughs> in general for the phone. <laughs> So it backfired on them. Yeah, no, I I wasn't even aware. <laughs> um, and and this year, so one of the big things that they introduced last year, uh, with Android Eight was uh, Project Trouble, which is one of those things that, of course, you're never going to notice as you know as a normal user of Android. But um, it was one of the big exciting things where, uh, they they were kind of separating out the, like most of the components of android the operating system from like the drivers the hardware drivers Mm. um to make it easier to for like third-party vendors to update their devices with newer versions of android um and so now that we're almost a year out from from that launching uh this is really like the first big test of like how well that's working um and for the companies that actually care it works pretty well like this is the very first time that we've had a non-google phone get a major Android version update on day one. Um, Essential released Android 9 for the Essential phone on the same day that the Pixels got it, um, which I think made a lot of Pixel uh, users kind of (laughs) mad, you know, (laughs) who view, like, the point of having a Pixel as, like, well, I can get the Android update before everybody else. (laughs) But, yeah. Um, I also notice, uh, and this is just kind of a silly thing, that they, uh, unlike Windows and the iPhone, they did not skip the number 9. So we actually do have Android 9 instead of like Android 10 or Android X or something like that. <laughs> is that a like a market share issue in countries that don't view the 9 with, <laughs> view the 9 well? I don't know. Um, I I. Th- I think that the reason that, like, Windows did it was, I think there was, like, a historic reason for, like, like Windows NT versioning numbers or something like that. Oh. Like the, um, So if, if, like, legacy programs were looking for the version number, I think, like, whatever, like, a Windows 9 would have confused them or something like that. That's what I remember hearing. Um, and then for the iPhone, I think they were just like, well, it's the anniversary, like, let's come out with, you know, a tenth iphone even though the last one was number eight um and yeah i mean like it it kind of lines up nicely with like mac os 10 right is the operating system number that they've had for over a decade now (laughs) for for max um yeah but android had no reason to do something like that so we actually get android 9 (laughs) so Let's talk about uh, kind of in broad strokes. Um, we're going to talk about the user interface changes because that's always one of the, the the big main thing that you notice first when you start uh, using a new version of an operating system. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the newer features uh, like that that 
aren't just a an interface change you know th stuff that actually is functionally different um in the new operating system Betsy made a big point. By the way, we were going to have three people on this show, but then uh, unfortunately Betsy wasn't able to get her microphone working uh, on her computer. Um, so I asked Betsy if there were any like big points that she wanted to make sure that we didn't miss. Uh, and she said that like the whole concept of like drastically changing the UI over and over again, you know, between major versions of an operating system, especially without feedback from the user is not a good way to promote adoption. Um, which is a very, very good point. Like, even even as somebody who has been paying attention to like, oh, what's coming up in the next version of Android, right? There were things in there that I was like, oh, I wait, I got to refigure out how this works now. <laughs> right. Well, that's something I can think of from something that Microsoft Office products do really well is mm. they start having the same functions slowly as they buy more products. And then even as things are completely useless, they'll leave the item in there for at least a couple more versions before they just mm. slowly drift it away. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of an issue, not kind of getting your, kind of throwing the whole body into the water before, you know, kind of being able to dip into it slowly. Yeah, speaking of like Microsoft Office, I remember in Office 2007 when they introduced like the ribbon menu instead of having like, you know, the file, edit, et cetera, et cetera, up, up top. Um, man, people got really, really angry about that. Uh, and I was a kid, so I was like, I don't care, I was, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but now I can understand, like, you know, I, for example, I'm, I'm uh, in the beta channel for, for Chrome, right? And they recently changed the way that, like, the, the tabs look along the top. And I'm like, oh, boy, am I even using the same browser anymore? I, <laughs> everything's still in the same places, but I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> I remember... The ribbon change is coming out, and I remember liking that. Like, I, mm -hmm. I like the workflow better. But then when I started working at the university I work at now, the computerized tests that we give kids to see if they're ready to complete college with a computer education is still using pre-Windows XP versions of Office tools to test them. Oh, boy. So he brings up the icon and it says, which tab would you click on to do this function? And every kid looks at that blankly and then comes in and like, Am I on the right test? All right, so one of the major things that people are going to notice uh, in Android 9 that's been changed in the user interface is the overview uh, page, I guess you would call it. Um, the, the I've heard people call it different things, right? The the recent the app the recent apps, the app switcher, what the the technical or the official name for it is the overview page. Oh, okay. Um yeah, so they um one of the things that I was had been looking forward to in this version of Android, I guess not looking forward to, but I I knew was coming. Right, was they were going to be changing like the way that the um, home button, the back button, and the overview button down on the on the bottom navigation bar work. Um, so they were going to be removing the overview button and then incorporating the functionality that it used to provide into like swipe gestures that you would do on the home button. Um, and I was really confused when I updated to Android 9 and I still had my overview button. I was like, what? Did, did I get the right update? Is this is this the right version of Android? Um, and it, it turns out that I think uh, in the beta, it was like the default. But when we got to the final release, uh, it's now like an opt-in setting that you have to you have to go to like gestures, I think, to go and find um, to find that. Oh. So yeah so i started playing around with it you know because like i can't really decide w which one's better until i've tried out both of them um have you been trying out the the new swipey version i need to look at that i've been just using the default okay so let's see here yeah. he said some gestures the, the classic the the traditional <laughs> yeah. overview version so so here's what i've been finding um like instead of tapping so 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 the new gestures go like this instead of like tapping on the overview button um in order to go into the overview page and see your list of recent apps you now like swipe up on on the home button which uh is now no longer just a circle it's like a little pill shaped thing um 
if you want to like quickly switch to the last app that you're using, uh, which you know using using the overview button would be a double tap on the overview button, mm. um, you now can like swipe from left to right really quickly on the on the home button, and it'll bring you to the, your last used app. Um, and the one that stumped me for a while was like, wait, how do I get into split screen now? Because like you used to long press on the overview button to get like you know two apps side by side on on your screen right um and now what you do is you go into the overview page so you can see the list of all of the apps that that you've recently been using and you long press on the icon for one of those apps um and that brings up the the split screen stuff uh, that's so kinda, yeah i kind of like having yeah. to be able to split screen quickly yeah yeah i agree but like on the other hand i don't do split screen very often yeah so i'm probably not losing out on too much by having like the extra you know step yeah i think the uses i had for split screen were so mundane oh, yeah that's not a word they were so sparse in between uses that mm -hmm. i don't know even when i needed to use it i'd probably have to like remember how to go back to it i think the most i've ever accidentally hit it was in google maps because i would try to close mm -hmm. out a route and it would just go to split screen, and it would just go to tiny Google Maps icon. It's like, no, yeah. I just need you gone. <laughs> I have to reopen you, close you, and then okay. I do. I really love the picture in picture mode for Google Maps, but like, yeah, picture in picture mode is like the worst thing in the world when you don't want it to be there. Like, <laughs> like hitting the home screen, like, um. Yeah, when when they introduced that for YouTube, right? Mm. If you have YouTube, uh, YouTube Red, um, like, if y you might be used to just like, okay, I'm done watching this YouTube video, I'll just like hit the home screen button to leave. But nope, now it it stays there. It's st it's still <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> well, and it'll still do that when you're in the YouTube app. If you just back mm -hmm. back step from the video, right? It like minimizes it down to the bottom bar. Yeah. Which is yep. just sometimes funny if you click on the wrong thing. If you get one of those like jump scare videos, and you're like, oh, nope, that's mm. the wrong one. Try to click back. <laughs> and it's like a time bomb in your hand. You're like, no, got to close it. How do I close you again? So um, so for the overview, the the new new gestures and stuff, yeah. um, I, I do kind of like being able to like swipe you know really quickly to like go between different apps but i feel like double tapping on the overview button is just as fast as that yeah so yeah i don't i don't think we're really gaining anything here yeah i don't think i mean it's just a new muscle memory to learn yeah it's yeah not any faster or slower so do you think if yeah. if the i mean this is so very clearly like based on the the gestures that are built into the iphone 10 like mm. do you think that if we didn't have the iphone 10 would google have even like come up with this this new navigation paradigm oh i mean between the way they're changing pixels with each new release and the way they're changing the ui i know they're just really following in iphone's footsteps mm -hmm. yeah I've been bragging to my wife since she has an iPhone about how I can listen to something and have a headphone, or I can have a headphone plugged in and be powering up my iPhone. Or my, blah. Other way around? Yeah, the other <laughs> way around. I can still be charging my phone while listening to something on headphones. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you on the Pixel 1? Yeah, I'm still on the Pixel yeah. 1, and I didn't realize I'm they jealous. did that. <laughs> I had to go to Google's website to find a dongle for a microphone mm -hmm. for a lapel mic. And that's when I noticed that the new phones don't have the iPhone jack. Yeah. Yeah. Headphone jacks. Blah. It's tough, words. man. And I don't think I don't think they're bringing it back for the Pixel 3 either. Mm. No, I doubt it. Especially since their UI changes are following Apple's. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, Google. Like, you don't have to copy everything that <laughs> Apple does. Just, like... <laughs> I get that it, from a marketing standpoint, now... Salesmen can go, oh, well, they're basically the same. They're just getting a different branding. Yeah. Except that, like, you know, even in on the pixels, right, it's not the default. It's, you know, you still have the overview button by default. Yeah. So it's like, so the only people who are really going to be going in there and changing that are probably, like, 
iPhone 10 enthusiasts, and iPhone 10 enthusiasts aren't going to be buying a Pixel 2. No, no, no. So, just... like, what, what was the point of this? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to switch back to having my overview button. Because, um, yeah, like you said, like, getting the split screen is faster there. Um, unfortunately, like, you have the horizontally scrolling list of apps, no matter, you know, whether you have the swiping or the overview button. Whereas we used to have a vertically scrolling list of apps and you could see a lot more of them at once. Yeah. Um, I do miss that. That's that's the big thing that I miss in the overviews. And so I was upset at that at first. And I've got some more reasons to be upset about that. <laughs> but then mm-hmm. I saw your note about being able to select text from minimized apps. Yes. And so that that's changes true. my tune a whole lot. Because it would have been really that- hard to do that. That's true. Slugging that would not through. have been nearly as possible with with vertically scrolling. Yeah. So my complaint, though, is now when I'm in the overview for apps, which now I'm messing with the... There we go. Ah. <laughs> Whenever I'm in the overview, though, when I've closed them out, I mm-hmm. sometimes accidentally open up a menu going up and down. Whoa, what? So, like, to swipe out of a... Oh, man, I've messed up my gestures so bad now. <laughs> Here we go. So to close out programs, you swipe up, right? Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes yeah. I drag a little too deep, and then I open up the apps menu on the bottom. Oh, yeah. And then if I try to drag it down, I accidentally hit the one coming from the top, and then I've got two layers <laughs> of the menu to get back to my apps. But they've added a clear all button, which we didn't have before, I don't think. So it's one of those things where it's... Uh... Wait, where's the clear all button? If you go all the way to the left. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be um, in like the bottom right-hand corner oh. when you're looking at the most recent app. Uh, that's where the so now it's all the way over past the least recent app. Oh, which yeah. may not be helpful if you actually need to close them all because you'll be sitting there for a while scrolling. Right. Yeah, I can imagine somebody like manually swiping away each and every single one of the apps and then getting to the end and seeing that clear all button and being like, oh, oh, that could have been so much faster. <laughs> and I'm terrible. I'm a compulsive app closer, which oh, I know is no, not actually one of those. good. I know that they fixed a lot of that with the battery life issues, but I still sit there scrolling off each one. I would wager that you're probably using more battery by like closing all of them simply because you're keeping your screen on longer to yeah. like go through the effort of closing all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's, I read a blog that was, it was measuring how much electricity you use just to reopen the app on startup. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it was more than if you were just going to use it again in an hour. Right. Like, yeah. Cause it has to, it has to load it all the way from the permanent storage and not just from memory. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I need I, to stop. <laughs> I used to be the opposite way. I would like never, ever, ever clear anything out of my recent apps list unless I like needed to force close it for some reason. Yeah. Um, but now I'm like, you know, I mean, if I, if there's something in my recent apps list that I'm not going to re- use in the near future that like it's, you know, I'm going to have to scroll past it to find other things that I am going to want, then sure, I'll, I'll remove it from my recent apps list. Yeah. Um, so I think I've split the difference there uh, in a reasonable way. <laughs> well, on the app side, actually, I'd be closing, ideally, to save battery power. Well, they're still mm-hmm. running in the background, even if they're not technically like open. Right, 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 right. So yeah. it doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> yeah, getting getting through to people's heads that like removing apps from the recents list on a mobile device is not like closing Windows yeah. on a desktop is a very different... Like, it's way more difficult than it should be yeah. <laughs> to tell people that. I work in a DOS database all day, so okay. my brain is, oh boy. is a completely different place most of <laughs> <laughs> um, One other thing that they changed in the overview list is that there isn't a Google search bar anymore. Yeah. Um, that that was like a staple of, of Android for the longest time. Um, and it is a piece of the UI that I never, ever, ever used. <laughs> I think I remembered to use it once or twice. Because otherwise, I would just open a Chrome window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is silly, because it was right there for convenience, but no, I don't like, think I ever used it. Yeah. 
or, or um, most launchers, you know, especially like if you're using the the default pixel launcher, right? You you just swipe over to the all the way to the left hand page, and that's your search, you know, Google search app. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and I guess it's still on pixel on the the lower menu. If you swipe up the the lower, oh oh, when you what the all app store yeah. or whatever. Yeah 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 yeah. See, interesting thing is. Um, when I'm in my overviews list, I can't actually swipe up to get to the all apps because like I, and I think that that's because I use a third party launcher. Oh. So like, so, so it doesn't default to using the all apps drawer from the pixel launcher. So that like, yeah, it must be a, a launcher setting and not like a system setting, which is kind of weird to me because I, I feel like overview is separate from the launcher, but Apparently not in this regard. Hmm. Interesting thing. Uh, do we want to start talking about notifications? Sure. Yeah. Um, so they <laughs> they made big changes to the notifications again. Uh, last year's changes were also like... Actually, I think last year's changes were more game-changing than this year's changes. Because um, like I had to get used to last year like the fact that, okay we've got this like new hierarchy for for notifications now where like you know something that's like currently running like a you know, a media playback or like google maps navigation or whatever like those are pinned to the top essentially mm-hmm. and then it would organize them by like okay these things appear to be like direct messages from people that you know so those are going to you know go towards the top and then we've got like general notifications from other apps and then we had like this grayed out category way at the bottom where like those those notifications wouldn't create icons up there in the notification bar and they're always like all the way at the bottom of of the notification tray when you pull them all down um we, I think I think we do have that kind of like hierarchy still, but they don't have the like grayed out category like anymore as as a as a hard and fast category, right? Mm. There are things that are like quote unquote minimized, but they're not like visually distinct. Um, but they still don't create icons up in the notification bar, mm. um, and. And I really liked the that that like method that they had last year because I have several like persistent notifications that I I don't ever need to see the icons for because I know that those apps are open and running. Thank you very much, Android. <laughs> um, you know things like like AccuBattery, um, the Pebble app, and uh, um, what's the name of the one that tells me which which carrier Project Fi is using. Um, <laughs> signal spy yeah um so i've got you know if i can avoid having those three icons up in the notification tray at all times then i'm happy yeah um, <laughs> um and one of one of the like methods that they gave us last year to ensure that that was happening was like you could go into the system settings and like tell it okay any notifications from this app should be like low 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 priority um and they also had like the different the different categories of notifications from a particular app, right? Um, I think like Twitter in particular had like, you know, do you want to treat direct messages differently than like, um, you know, the the generic notifications that are like, here's something that you may have might have missed that a lot of people who you follow are like interacting with or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't have nearly that much control in Android Nine, which is a real shame. Um, I can understand that that was probably kind of confusing for a lot of people. Yeah. But like, but I found it very, very useful to like be able to go and tweak, uh, you know, really detailed um, the way that different notifications were treated on my phone. See, I didn't get into it that deeply, but I would go through and I would turn, I would just turn all notifications off except for direct messages nearly. Mm. I do a lot of social media things. So like, getting a pinterest update every 10 minutes that someone pins me like that's <laughs> nice <laughs> but i don't need to know man but yeah i'm i'm almost the opposite like i um like i the only time i don't i don't like follow my twitter uh timeline you know i don't yeah. have to read every single thing that's in my twitter timeline um i just have like a handful of users who i have favorited and like 
Twitter sends me notifications whenever they post something. And so then, like, that's the only time that I ever actually look at Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And I can't I can't decide which way is, is healthier, you know. <laughs> um, I enjoy... So I follow a, a wide range of like-minded people that are kind of in the, in the news space. Because mm-hmm. I can go out to Twitter and I can get a quick feel for from different regions of political thought and philosoph- philosophical talk kind of where things are at for the moment Mm. and so it's kind of a nice just overview of the day but it's funny once the new notifications for the twitter app went in i think it was maybe on last year like late last year it was sort of like well these six people you click on and interact with more so we're going to push them to the top Mm -hmm. and it's just funny because then it's well now i have to dig through my twitter line and find all the garbage that i should have just unfollowed (laughs) Mm -hmm. i really wish twitter would kind of stop improving itself at some point (laughs) yeah i just wish that they hadn't taken away like notification support from third-party apps because um that's what i relied on i'm I'm back to using like the first party twitter app now and i i'm still grumbling about it (laughs) uh oh well but now yeah it it seems like taking away customization for kind of waiting your notifications is a step back I could see if yeah. not enough people are using it, but I don't know. Yeah, and and I mean, I I think that like the the categorizing notifications is like the perfect example of this like digital wellness concept that they're pushing with you know that that, that that's going to be coming to Android nine sometime this fall, um, you know, because like like if I if I can very carefully curate which notifications i'm going to get um then then i you know i can like use my phone in a much more healthy manner um they do they do try to help in some ways like um i noticed a few times after like dismissing a notification it would it would have a thing like staying there right where the notification used to be that says like hey you dismiss these notifications from this app a lot do you want to just like never see them again (laughs) um and i laughed because like the first time that it showed me that was when i uh swiped away the like the playback um notification the media control play notification for pocket casts and i'm like no i really definitely need that to be there (laughs) (laughs) and the reason that i swipe it away is because like well, I'm done playing it now. And there's nothing else that I can do with that up other th- or that notification other than swipe it away. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, what was it that it came up with? I think it was my emails. Mm-hmm. I stopped using my phone to directly respond to emails unless it's an extreme mm. emergency. But usually, I'll kind of just okay. I got an email from them. I'll go take care of it when I get back to my desk, and I'll swipe it away. And I was like, "Do you want to stop seeing all your emails?" And I was like, "No, no, I really do need these. <laughs> Please don't." auto take those away from me yeah i'm i've uh started doing kind of the opposite i've used started using email as like a messaging platform again Uh to actually like you know keep in contact with real people instead of just like this this thing where like coupons go to live (laughs) uh and, and um and like i've been really impressed with how well inbox like separates out like here is a whole bunch of crap that Ian definitely does not need a push notification <laughs> for. And then like, you know, it, it gets like just the nuggets that I actually do need to address as soon as they come in um, and sends those as push notifications. So, and, but, but of course that's like not on the system settings level, right? That's on the app level. Yeah. That, that that's a choice that inbox is making, not that Android nine is helping me make. Um, yeah. Um, there's a few aesthetic changes to the notification tray. Um, we've got kind of this this like rounded corner motif now. Yeah. Um, it used to be, it used to be more of like a like a squishy cards. Is I guess that's how I would describe it. Yeah, I can see that. Like like they they felt like you know material design. They kind of felt like they were stacked on top of each other, right? And you know you you like ex- as you pull them down, they kind of are separating from each other. Um, so I guess more of a more of an accordion, right? Yeah. There we go. Um, but like they were all, I think, they all just had square square corners. They you know none of them were like connected to each other in in any way. Now we've got kind of like these rounded corners. 
Um, and the rounded corners kind of help you to see different sections of the notification tray sometimes. Um, it's like I think when I have uh, some something playing, um, that notification, nope, that's still part of the same rounded corner. Never mind, maybe I was mistaken about that. <laughs> um, the other aesthetic thing that they've changed is they've got like a new animation that that shows when you open a, a notification and i really really like it like the notification kind of like visually expands to fill the whole screen and becomes the app <laughs> um and i like i i really like that kind of feeling um and i've already forgotten what it looked like in older versions of android <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to remember i felt like it oh, what did it do i remember it did something where it opened up at you, but it wasn't. Man, what was it? It's this almost like the every whole... time that we get an update. <laughs> I felt like it did something like, well, like when you open in something from the overview, or it just kind of the mm -hmm. app itself just expanded. Mm hmm. Yeah. But yeah. And I, I guess they, they do have kind of different animations that they use in different cases like um i think when you when you open up an app from the home screen from the from the launcher right it's got this kind of like slide up animation um although now that i'm saying that i'm i think maybe that's just my third party launcher oh. <laughs> well now i'm going back and forth between apps and it seems like it opens an app like from the icon and it explodes out uh okay yeah yeah, yeah. and then whenever it's got that you kind of like color splash that open that that fills the whole screen yeah and when you open it from a notification it does the same thing but just out of the notification almost uh-huh yeah. yeah 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 what happens when you push the home button to close an app what what's the animation like for that let's see it just kind of drops down so it's a slide down yeah okay yeah i think that's why i set my launcher to use the slide up uh because it's you know the opposite of the slide down animation yep um it's weird that i pay enough attention to like <laughs> <laughs> to go and bother to set those settings like that oh man well and see going back to my dos database that i work on all day i'm like well why does it need that much animation shouldn't it just <laughs> just blink yeah. on you're ready right just a blue screen yellow text we're good yeah, the the more uh, the more like text printouts you know your program does, the less the less efficient it is, right? Yeah. That's <laughs> I, that is something I'm still like old man about is how mm -hmm. much animation they added to like Microsoft products, mm -hmm. enough so that my old computer can't run Office products anymore, mm -hmm. and so now it's just mm -hmm. a storage computer or, like server. But I just remember the day that that update came out, just oh, they're phasing me out. My two gigs yeah, of RAM. Like, like from, from XP to Vista to Windows 7, you know, we had like increasing minimum system requirements just for the operating yeah. system. Um, and I was I was really happy when like Windows 7 to 8 to 10 had absolutely no change in the minimum system requirements. So they, they dialed themselves back on that. Yeah. Luckily. Um the before before you pull down the notification tray, right, we've got the um just kind of the status bar along the top of the screen, right? Yeah. Um, the major change up there is that they moved the clock from the right-hand side with all of the other, with like the battery and the cellular status and the Wi-Fi status. Um, they moved it over to the left-hand side by itself or next to your notification icons. I don't like it. No. I don't like it at all. I, I keep looking at it like it's a notification exactly yeah like i i rely on my peripheral vision to tell me like is there anything in that corner if no then i'm fine if yes <laughs> i've got a notification i need to deal with it when i could be imagining this but i thought whenever you used to do a timer it would put it over there yes i believe so because because that becomes a notification yeah um yeah because like a timer yeah a timer becomes a notification that you can interact with and see now it just has the icon for a timer and you have to do a pull down to see the notification to see the actual time left oh oh hmm and that wouldn't be such a big deal but i give exams all day and so i use my timer quite a bit as a safety mm -hmm. and so there's been a couple times now that i've noticed that it's missing 
when I need We're it. talking about the one that counts down, right? Not the one that counts up. We're talking about the timer, not the stopwatch, right? Yeah. It's a stopwatch. Okay, yeah, yeah. Keep it. Oh, that's an icon, too. What's the lock screen situation? <laughs> okay, but it does keep it on the, the lock screen, which is nice. Okay, good. Yeah. But no, I keep looking during tests and thinking, oh, it's 2.30? No, there's no way this test is two hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, and and I it took me about a, a day and a half to figure out, like, why they moved the clock from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And it's definitely because this is the first version of stock Android that supports phones with notches. Um, yeah. So they they had to put the clock over there because otherwise you would run they would run out of space for all the icons that go on the right hand side. <laughs> so I saw your notes set talking about notches. What yeah. are notches? So have you seen like the iPhone ten? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Look up it um or like the essential phone. Um it's where they have the you know, the phone manufacturer uh has Oh for like pushed the yeah, done like the edge to edge display to such an extreme that like they need somewhere to put like the camera and the you know like the ambient light sensors and stuff like that, right? So they need just kind of like this this black cutout. Uh and so far I think all of them have been putting that cutout like at the top in the middle of the display. Um and but like Android supports up to two notches. So if you're a, if you're a hardware manufacturer, you can put one notch along the top, one notch along the bottom if you want to, um, or apparently you can put one notch up in like the upper right hand corner of the screen. Um, yeah, I I mean I don't really like the notches. I'm not super opposed to the concept, but I also don't think that we need like edge to edge displays like this. Mm. Um, I I value having a pair of front facing speakers more than i value having like a screen that fills the entire surface of the phone yeah well and i th- it's almost a um oh, what's the word oh shoot i want to say suspension of belief when i'm looking at a phone it's like it draws me out of the phone experience to remember mm. that i'm looking at a phone and not like a, a video or something like that right 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 um, yeah, I guess until we can have those like totally glass phones like they have in the expanse, right? Then <laughs> I'm not interested in any of your like <laughs> oh, man, immersive things. I'm holding out for the uh was it the remake of Total Recall where he just had his hand that was the phone with the buttons in his palm. Mm. And this the uh display was just built into his eyes. Right, right, right. Yeah. I'm just Full holding augmented out augmented reality. I'll wait for the notches yeah. till then. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I don't see why they had to move the the clock over to the left hand side for phones that don't have notches. Yeah, they could have just thrown like, the notifications over there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and not only do they have the clock over there, but I've also noticed that like it only shows me like three or four notification icons now before it goes like just the generic like dot you know there's more but like i'm not going to show them to you and there's there's extra space there in the middle of the notification bar that they could be using (laughs) but they don't because like what if there's a notch there and it's like isn't that something that you could have like said okay phone manufacturers if you're going to have a notch in your phone your phone has to report to the operating system like where that notch is how big it is so that we can avoid putting stuff in there yeah, but I guess they didn't. I guess I don't know. They just <laughs> uh, it bugs me so much. In notch phones, you just have to deal with having a second layer of notifications that pop up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and you know what's crazy uh, is that, of course, because the Pixel line is the new Nexus line, right? And so they're like the kind of default um, uh, app developer like you know phone that you buy to test out your app on different versions of android and stuff um in the developer options you can go and like turn on this like simulated notch mode where it will insert <laughs> black areas onto the screen and you know move everything around as it would be on a phone with a notch and like the pixel 2 doesn't like you know the f- screen doesn't fill up the surface of the phone the way that it does on a phone with a notch yeah. so it looks 
absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm never I'm not going to stop being salty about this clock being moved. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Ugh. Um, you know what isn't bad though? No is the new like magnifying glass thingy that pops up when you when you like long press and you know scrub around on text um it's it feels really really good um and it feels very ios gotta be honest there um but i it does like up until up until now i was kind of split between like okay move like the feeling of moving the cursor around in in a block of text it feels better on android but like on ios it looks better because it's easier to see where you're moving it to because it's got that magnifying glass that pops up above your finger so your finger isn't getting in the way um and i think this new version that they have in android 9 is the best of both worlds it still feels great the way that it always felt in android uh but we also get the magnifying glass that pops up up above yeah i'm looking here so like when you're typing out it brings up the magnifying glass yeah so if i have like a bunch of text here and i like long press on it eh, eh, how do i no <laughs> see i'm i'm trying to look at you but also look at my phone there we go yeah. so, so i've got like this magnifying glass that appears above it so that i can see oh. the text better yeah yeah so unlike unlike an i believe in ios you have to like long press to kind of allow yourself to move the the cursor around um in android it's still like you've got this kind of colorful like thing that looks grabbable underneath the the text right that and that's what you kind of grab and move around to move the cursor um yeah but now we've got that extra magnifying glass that appears up above i highly approve of that good stuff um, the quick settings have some new differences. Um, I do like the dark theme that they have for the quick settings. So the yeah. quick settings, by the way, is is where you you know you pull down the notifications and then you keep pulling farther until you get like the, the that grid of what is it nine icons? Uh, oh yeah, it's not two pages yes. now. It's just the just nine. I guess um, can you still? Well, no, you you can you can have as many pages as you want. Oh, okay, you just said, okay. I just haven't put them back in there yet yeah um the they used to have like a dark mode where that was dependent on like what your wallpaper was so if you set a wallpaper that was primarily like really dark colors then the quick settings would be a dark theme to kind of match um now you can either choose like light or dark or change it according to whatever my wallpaper is so i'm really glad that i can just force it to be a dark theme because i like dark themes yeah well, that's I used to always put a dark background for my wallpaper mm-hmm. because reading in bed, if I opened it late at night, it would suddenly blind me. Yeah, take me a few minutes to adjust there, which I um, completely forgot about before putting a new brightly colored wallpaper on the other day <laughs> before the update. <laughs> Unfortunately, the dark theme does not extend to other parts of the system UI, like you know the s- settings app isn't like a dark theme or anything like that that would have been nice yeah um especially like on the pixel 2 which has an oled display like having a nice dark background is like oh yeah the pixels aren't even being lit at all (laughs) um which is what i live for these days (laughs) yeah unfortunately in the quick settings they no longer have the kind of visual distinction the drop down arrows to to like cue the user to know like whether they're about to push a toggle that like turns wi-fi on or off versus like opening up a new menu that that will like let them choose between you know which which wi-fi network that's nearby do they want to connect to kind of thing um in the new version of android it's it's just like everything all the icons are circles there's no different parts you know like tapping on different parts of it do- doesn't do different things um the difference now is if you tap on an icon it's going to be a toggle most likely if you long press on the icon then it will bring you into the settings app and bring you to whatever settings is like relevant to that thing so if we're using the wi-fi example right if you tap on the wi-fi icon in quick settings then it'll turn wi-fi on or off but if you long press on it then it'll bring you into the system settings app 
in in the like Wi-Fi area. Yeah, and some of those can be a little intuitive just from using the iPhone already using the functions before. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even blink at how the auto how the auto tilt could have a long press with it. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, is there a long press on the auto rotate? Yeah, because it can change. It could go directly to your display settings. Uh huh. Yeah. Which I think in the past it just turned on off and on auto rotate. Right. The funny thing about that example is that there's like nothing in here that has to do with auto rotate other than a toggle. No, no. <laughs> All the other display settings are things like the brightness level and ambient display and whatnot, um, and uh, night light, which by the way literally just turned on for me because it's eight twenty one and it's sunset <laughs> here in Saint Paul. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've got mine set pretty late. It's like eleven o'clock. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and this was actually one of the things that Betsy, uh, was telling me that she, she hadn't been able to figure out right away was like for Bluetooth, right? You used to tap on like the little drop down arrow to like see the list of Bluetooth, uh, devices you had previously connected this thing to. And she was trying to push, you know, the Bluetooth button to like get into that menu and it was just turning off Bluetooth. And she's like, no, (laughs) that's not what I wanted. Um, and it was pretty funny because like while we were messaging, that that was when she figured out like oh I can just long press it oh okay <laughs> <laughs> to go into that menu yep 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 I do appreciate any time a developer can remove an extra button though because mm-hmm. even though like auto rotate goes to display settings which is just kind of silly I appreciate that they didn't make a separate display icon to mm. force me to add that one as well if I wanted to change my display settings a lot right right right. Yeah, you just have to memorize that, yeah. like, oh, yeah, auto-rotate. It would be really funny to have auto-rotate in your quick settings, even if you never change your auto-rotate <laughs> settings, just for the purposes of getting to the display settings Yeah, <laughs> faster. Oh, man, if brightness wasn't just a drag down, it, I, it would be mm-hmm. on my quick. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the... the the physical button menus so for the power button and the volume buttons yeah. um, they've actually they've made a lot of changes to this one um so for one thing if you long press on the power button now um you get the power off and restart options just like we always had uh, but we have this new screenshot button which is pretty nice yeah um i i mean I think that most people who are interested in taking screenshots don't have any trouble like go looking up like oh wait okay for my specific phone which button combination is it mm-hmm. to take a screenshot um but since the does the Pixel 1 have the volume buttons on the same side as the power button Yeah they're all on the same side Yeah 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 um it is a little bit trickier to like do that button combo with just one hand because my thumb is over there you know yeah i usually I have, have to do thumbs. like on the side and hope it doesn't auto rotate mm-hmm. while i'm doing it yeah i um i that is one thing that i really miss about my nexus 5 if we can go back that far <laughs> was that the volume buttons were on the opposite side of the phone mm. than the power button so it was just you know two fingers on opposite sides of the phone uh easy peasy um but yeah if if you have trouble with that like button combo then you've got a new option for taking a screenshot from my days long ago when i did mobile game app reviews mm-hmm. i did them all mm-hmm. on iphone and i remembered it being just a really simple process to take screenshots and that was one of the first things when i got the pixel it's like ah oh, it's kind of hard to do the screenshot while still getting an action yeah. shot that just yeah. wasn't me just wiping out and i was really hoping that the screenshot button would fix that by having it with the power and it didn't really <laughs> Yeah, no, not if you want action shots. I mean, now we've got options just to record screen, so it's easier. But Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. It just means I have to do work. (laughs) (laughs) What a time to be alive where we can just, like, record this. Like, my phone can just record its screen. No problem. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, The volume settings are also way different. So what used to happen... And this is like one of the big sticking points in Android, right? Was like, what's gonna happen if I if I push the volume button? <laughs> Let's find out. Because um, like, if you if nothing was going on on your phone, it would default to the notification volume, right? 
the the ringer volume. Mm-hmm. Um, if you had some media playing, then it would default to changing the media volume, probably. Yeah, hopefully. If you if you had, I don't. So I've never tried changing volume while there was an alarm going off. But like, I think if if there was an alarm going off and you push a volume button, maybe that would change the alarm volume. I don't know. I think it used to lock the alarm. Oh volume. yeah. I know. I know. There's days where I've woken up and I've tried turning off my alarm incorrectly from grogginess, <laughs> and I think it doesn't let you do it during it. I think you have to turn it off first. Okay. I think. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, if you're Chromecasting, like that takes priority. Oh, yeah. Unless something has gone wrong with the Chromecast, <laughs> in which case it gets confused and then does something else. Um, and yeah, so so the the way that you would deal with that is like yeah, you you hit like the volume rocker once to see which of those four different options it's going to just choose and if it chooses the wrong one then you would just like hit the down like the the little drop down menu and that would reveal all four volume sliders and you could you know change whichever one you actually wanted to change um now we have just like a single volume slider that appears right next to the volume buttons and it's it's vertically oriented instead of horizontally oriented now um, and it's always the media playback volume. Oh, I didn't realize it Which, didn't switch. And yeah, no, it, it, uh, it's, unless you're Chromecasting. Oh, Chromecast okay. does take priority if you're Chromecasting something. Um, but barring that example, <laughs> the, the media playback is always the one that gets changed when you hit the, the hardware buttons. Um, and in order to get to the other, uh, volume settings, they have like this little cog icon below it and that brings you into the system settings app under the sound uh section um and i kind of i mean yeah i I like it um i did kind of like that i didn't need to go all the way into the system settings to get to those other three you know before but like it's it's no skin off my nose honestly yeah uh i mean i was just so trained to hit the volume button and then immediately swipe down to swipe mm-hmm. volumes left and right <laughs> that it just took a couple of days to get used to it mm-hmm. but i do think it's a little easier to get to especially with one hand that you can just oh yeah that's true you can just start volume downing and then just swipe down yeah and i really really like that we now have like consistency i know exactly which volume is going to be changed when i hit that button um because like let's be honest how often do i want to change the volume of my notification sound hardly ever yeah. unless i'm trying to like go into vibrate only mode which they have accounted for uh in that when you when you hit the the volume button um above the volume slider there appears a toggle that is like it's like a bell icon and that that uh toggles you between like ringer on uh vibrate only and totally silent like ringer silent um and that's separate from the do not disturb settings which we'll get into <laughs> later <laughs> yeah one thing i don't remember from the last update could you change call volume outside of a call oh uh i don't remember i don't remember it being a setting you could change from the drag down i'm not sure if you could just think dig into settings and do it I think you're right. I'm not sure, though. But yeah, there it is. Call volume. Yeah. I just remember any time I got a call, I always had to hit the volume up on the call because I always kept my ringer volume low or something like that. Mm-hmm. So there was always just that mm. immediate volume up as soon as I took a call. Mm-hmm. So it's nice that I can at least turn that up now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, now I want to uh, like test it, but like, you know, we're recording because <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want to see like if i'm in a call and i hit the hardware volume buttons does that change the volume of the call it has to it can't it it can't do the the media playback volume in that case right well yeah and i was always surprised. that'd be absurd i was always surprised that the media playback was separate from ring or from call volume but i guess it makes mm-hmm. sense if you want everything muted but you still want to be able to take a call Hmm. Hmm. yeah and i, I think that it 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 does kind of having those like four different categories for different uh, volumes, but not giving each individual app like direct control over their own volume is a good approach. Um, as opposed to like when I'm here on Windows, um, I have like 
the system volume, I have the volume of my physical speakers, I have the volume of each individual app, yeah. right? You know, because like I within Chrome, right? Like in different tabs, I might have like YouTube, I have a volume slider on YouTube itself. Also in another, you know, in like Google Play Music, I have a different volume slider. <laughs> yeah. That just reminds me that I had a technical problem a couple weeks ago. And it's because I didn't realize the volume mixer app on Windows had a slider at the bottom. And so there was mm. one more icon on the right hand side that I just needed to mouse over to to turn up. Mm -hmm. I forget what app it was, but one of the apps just wasn't showing up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's also there's a new hardware shortcut to put the phone into vibrate only or mute. So this is like instead of hitting the volume button and then like hitting that toggle a few times to like switch between um, notifications, you know, making sound or vibrate only or mute. Um, you can you can hold down the volume up and power buttons together to kind of toggle between the, those two. I don't like that, and I was worried that I might accidentally, like, you know, activate that at some point, so I turned off that gesture. <laughs> Sweet. So you hold both, and that will turn on and off vibrate? Yeah, it'll it'll toggle you between the different modes. Wait, why isn't it doing that? <laughs> oh, right, because I turned off the gesture. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I accidentally, I accidentally started playing Dancing Queen. Sorry. <laughs> Never be sorry about Dancing Queen. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that answers one question that I had, which was, um, it, you know, if I go past vi vibrate only and go into like the mute version, you know, is that is that the same as silence all that used to be around? No, it is not, because silence all would also not allow the phone to play any media it was like it was a setting that was beyond just notifications it was like any sound that the phone might make um and so i'm really bummed out that we don't have that because if i had been in total silence just now i wouldn't have even noticed that i had accidentally started playing something <laughs> oh what now i'm playing with it and it played a sound randomly with everything you did <laughs> uh, yeah that's peculiar. I like that concept because when I had an iPhone, I really enjoyed having a mechanical switch to mute everything. Mm. And I was kind of lit down that there wasn't anything like that. So I kind of like the idea. I'm kind of worried, though, now that I just made a alarm come on while trying to test it out. That Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like, can I, test, like, can I trust that when I'm in a quiet environment or I'm going to ring mm -hmm. it by accident? Yeah. And I, I, I always felt like android's approach to do not disturb was better than ios's because of that hardware switch um because like with with android's do not disturb mode uh with they they can do clever things like allowing us to turn on do not disturb for a certain amount of time or like have different schedules set right so like i have do not disturb that automatically turns on uh during weekdays when i would be in my classroom yeah. right um and when you have like when it when it's all dependent on a hardware switch that's that's just not possible because then you could end up with times where it's like not congruent with what the hardware switch is telling the user it should be yeah um yeah which was one of my complaints for like the i think it was the one plus five phone where they like one plus started using a hardware toggle for do not disturb stuff and i was like no no stop ruining it <laughs> Now, now I have strong opinions about the dumbest things. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've used the software Do Not Disturb long enough, I'm like, okay, this is superior. Especially since I've gotten really used to having the like the weeknight not Do Not Disturb. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because it's really nice that I can actually, I won't forget to turn my phone sound off when I go to sleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I, I always kind of laugh at people who like you know, I'll send them a message and they're like, I was sleeping. Why'd you wake me up? And I'm like, that's your own fault that your phone was set to, how am I supposed to know that you're sleeping? What? <laughs> I had a coworker kind of low key threaten me because they're like, you're sending emails to students at one o'clock in the morning. Cause we just had an automated email thing. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I don't get any emails 
notifications at one o'clock in the morning. They just turned off. And he's like, he like pulled out this like ancient BlackBerry. He's like, well, they go to my phone. He's like, oh, well, that's <laughs> that's your issue, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's we don't live in the days where like you know you've got a landline and the landline is going to ring no matter what yeah. you know unless you like put it off the hook. Yeah. I did see a, a meme of this is my do not disturb and it was just a phone off the hook. I just <laughs> I know what that means, but I wish I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Second opinion is supported only by listeners like you who voluntarily donate on our Patreon. Money we make through Patreon will go towards buying products to review and improving the quality of the show. Our content has always been released for free, and always will be, but if you want to go that extra mile, you can get cool rewards like access to The Fringe, our behind-the-scenes after show, access to polls to help us choose future products to review, access to show docs as we're working on them, Nexus stickers, and your name shouted out right here on the show. Not to mention, you will have my eternal gratitude. So if you're interested in helping us take this to the next level, join us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Again, that's patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Um, the last thing that they've added uh, the, with regards to the physical button menus is actually this This is an opt-in setting. Um, you, we, We've got a new lockdown mode that you can set. Um, and and I don't remember where I think this must have been in like the security sections of the uh, of the system settings, um, but when I w- with that turned on when you like long press the power button below the restart but above the screenshot it now has a button that says lockdown oh. and when I hit that um, it locks the phone and it will not unlock for anything other than the pattern that I set, right? So I can't use my fingerprint. Um, I can't, like, you know, smart smart lock features, right? So, like, facial recognition or on-body detection or um, I'm at home, right? None of those things are going to keep the, the phone unlocked. So it's a guarantee, like, it is locked down unless I put in the, the passcode that I know. Um, and so I'm definitely going to be using that next time I go through, like, airport security. Uh because I've been like really dissatisfied with the options that Android gave us before. Yeah. Um, like I, I know, I know that there, like on the lock screen, there was a like if you long pressed on the the unlock icon down at the bottom, it would lock it, but it would still unlock if you use your fingerprint. Yeah. So like I could still be coerced into like putting my finger on the phone, you know and and like unlocking the phone um so before now like the only option i had was like well turn off the phone because you know when you restart the phone then it won't it it won't do anything until you put in the pattern um but now we've got like this lockdown mode where i can keep it on but uh i don't have to worry about it being unlocked unless i do it um yeah yeah and I think I think when you're in lockdown mode, you could also tell it uh, don't show any like notification stuff on the lock screen. So that's nice, because um, that that is one security concern. Is like all the you know most phones nowadays just like show your notifications on the lock screen by default. Um, and so if you like if you're in a situation where you don't want that to be visible to anybody who could just like pick up your phone, then yeah, lockdown mode is a good thing. No, that's a really good feature. Now I'm playing with all those lockdown features. <laughs> that was something I'd never thought about. Oh, was it one of the last times I was getting ready to go on and for a long distance travel? People were mm-hmm. like, "Well, you need to make sure you turn off all your fingerprint detection devices because there's something about TSA agents aren't allowed to make you put in a password or something to start it up." But something like that. Something, but they could still make you swipe or something. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I was talking to some friend, and they're like. Well, if I just need to unlock your device, I just need the finger. It's like, yeah. oh, well, fingerprint devices and biometric readers aren't quite as cool as I thought they were when they first came out. <laughs> yep, yep. That is saying, as I like um, that the the pattern now doesn't require or doesn't show your pattern the whole time you're you're drawing it. Yeah, yeah, same. Um, like 
for for from a security standpoint it's nice but it also it's very aesthetically pleasing yeah no it looks i almost think of it like the koi pond app that was in blogger forever ago because it like leaves little trails as you screen moused over it oh okay but it wasn't like a full line Mm-hmm. yeah it it feels a lot like you know when you're gesture typing on the keyboard mm. Uh, right, you know that you've got the trail that kind of follows your finger, but it disappears after a certain, you know, after like a fraction of a sen- second. Yeah. Um, speaking of the lock screen, I also like that we now have like the weather being shown on the lock screen, um, and also like your upcoming calendar events are displayed. Like, um, I think if 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 anything's coming up in the next half hour, it shows that on the lock screen. Yeah. Yeah, because it showed my morning meeting today, and I really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. I was waiting forever for Firefox to update because that's what I use at work. Mm-hmm. And I just opened my phone or unlocked my phone for a second, and it showed it. And I was like, oh, "Okay, good. I do have thirty <laughs> minutes." Yep, and I I think it's it is interesting, like the different assumptions about like how long before a thing is it appropriate to show this, right? Because like when I turn on notifications from my calendar app. Uh, it defaults to like 15 minutes before, yeah. right? For this lock screen thing, it's like, okay, it's not going to bug you about it, right? It's not going to make a noise, but it is there for like a whole half an hour beforehand. Yeah. So it, it's just, yeah, it's interesting to me like how we make those decisions. Eh. <laughs> yeah, and I would say being, having seen the app development side of things, a lot of it is just, uh, I guess we'll try yeah. it. <laughs> See what people hate yeah yeah and then then you have to have like a really good data collection system and yeah it's man maybe i don't ever want to make an app come to think of it oh it's great all right let's uh let's dig into that do not disturb yeah um yeah do not disturb used to have like three different levels associated (laughs) with it and i really liked it it was really nice um because there was like there was priority only there was alarms only and then there was total silence yeah. and there were there were really really nice ways that you could take sub, like advantage of the subtle differences between priority only and alarms only you know um so like for example alarms only very clearly that's the setting that i would want to use overnight when i am sleeping because like i don't want to receive like messages even from my starred contacts i am sleeping that is sacred you cannot do not wake me up (laughs) until my alarm goes off so i don't like you know i don't want total total silence i just want you know to allow my alarms through and that's it um and like yeah you could you could like there were different ways that you could set up priority only and alarms only right like so you could tell alarms only whether or not you wanted to allow notifications from your calendar right uh for reminders and stuff like that um but of course those are the kinds of things that like you're expected to change it once in the system settings and then like that's kind of your setting forever and ever amen um but now we've only got we, we just have do not disturb it's one thing it's one setting um same same deal where you know you're expected to like go in and tell it like what what things you want do not disturb to allow and what things you don't want it to allow and then leave that uh and and just use do not disturb when when it's appropriate um yeah i'm miffed (laughs) well so i did the long push on do not disturb Mm -hmm. and i'm looking through all the they have a lot of behaviors to really narrow it down yes but i do wish i had the different tiers still like or maybe just a preset like if i could have like three presets that i could program Mm -hmm. like the old that would be kind of nice but yeah and some of these settings i don't know when i wouldn't use them for a do not disturb setting like notifications why would i still want the visual blinks on do not disturb yeah and and i think that is a new thing right that like do not disturb is no longer just limited to like the sounds and vibrations that the phone makes it it also affects the visual things that the phone does um so i particularly like the fact that i can set it to not show any of the icons on the lock screen right um because then like for example last weekend when i was running the soundboard for uh for the play 
I really shouldn't be glancing down at my phone even just to see like, oh, is there a Twitter notification? Is there a Hangouts (laughs) notification? Like, what is the app icon that's there for my notification? Um, And so, so you can you can set up like Do Not Disturb to be totally like Do Not Disturb Me at all right don't have the led flash don't have anything appearing on the um on the the lock screen um don't have like the like notifications that normally would pop down like and visually interrupt the top of your screen you know um that can be really nice if you you know especially if you're doing something like i'm using my phone as a as an e-reading device or like if i actually use an android device as like my work computer right or something like that right maybe i you know i'm working on a report right now i don't want to actually be interrupted by anything um then you know this this these new options and do not disturb can be really good for those cases um yeah and so it, it kind of i think it more clearly solidifies in my mind like the differences between what do not disturb is kind of meant for versus what like muting the notification sounds is meant for. Yeah. Right. Um, Cause now I'm thinking of more about like, I could, I could go into my class and have my phone set to like, not make any sounds, but still allow visual interruptions because like, if I'm looking at my phone, then it's totally fine for me to like see notifications. Whereas I don't want my students to like hear my phone going off and like be distracted by that. Yeah. Yeah. On now I'm thinking about it. I almost think I thought of the airplane mode as a do not disturb, (laughs) (laughs) but now I'm realizing there's apps that a work off of without Wi-Fi that would still give you a notification. Oh yeah. Like my workout app is still like, Hey, by the way, you're, still being lazy <laughs> like oh thanks mm-hmm. thanks app but then i'm thinking like with someone's multiply calling you from your starred contacts well yeah it probably would be nice for me to actually take that call even mm-hmm. if i'm sleeping so yeah i could see needing that level of oh delicate selection on <laughs> do not disturb yeah and i don't remember exactly what the what the uh defaults were in there because i have mess them up and change them around so much that I <laughs> yeah and I, and I think i'm still kind of finding my way to exactly what i want those settings to be yeah um yeah in particular like the the visual interruptions side of it because that's not a thing that i th- i have dealt with before right yeah yeah well and that's such an alien feature to me anyway Anytime I see someone that has the LED flash notification on, mm. I just always want to be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sure there's... A, I love that. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I I think the reason I say that is because it's like a cultural thing at the university to have your phone out mm. on the desk when you're in a meeting. Mm. And so there's a lot of administrators that all just have their LED lights going off in the middle of a meeting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not uh, epileptic epileptic but i'd really right. appreciate not having a flashing light <laughs> on the desk um but it's really nice yeah. having all the different notification changes like that for visuals yeah. and i think it was the the led made a lot more sense back before we had like these always on displays mm. because um a lot of times like you would get a notification and maybe you weren't right next to your phone when that came through so you didn't notice it and then you would have absolutely no idea that something is waiting for you on your phone until you turn on your screen yeah um yeah um speaking of having your your phones out on the desk or on the table in front of you um i thought that i had heard something about like there was going to be a new do not disturb like like a setting where it would turn on do not disturb if you put your phone face down on a on a surface um but that does not appear to be in this version of Android Nine. I didn't see anything about it in there, um, and I was kind of I was kind of hoping to to try that out, um, but uh, alas, it does not it does not exist. I do know that I behaviorally changed to start making sure I flip my phone face down at night mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because if I got an audio or a visual display notification, the 
the notification would light up my whole room. So there's a couple uh, times yeah. I woke up and I was like, why am I awake? And then my <laughs> phone would flash a second. I was like, oh, and just flip it over. Um, speaking of uh, actually the uh, the LEDs and um, like possibly inducing epileptic seizures, <laughs> um, I have encountered high school students of mine who have their iPhones set to like of course the iphone doesn't have an actual notification led built into it but apparently there's a thing that you can do where like you can set the flashlight to flash really fast a bunch of times whenever you get a notification and i hate it so much well, that's what i was it talking about that's awful oh yeah that's okay my, that is what you're what talking my administrators about. have on is the flashlight oh god oh they need to be taught a lesson yeah no we'll be sitting there and there's just this bright light like a strobe light going off on the desk and oh, man, I thought no. it was bad in movie theaters, but I'm <laughs> I'm starting to get tunnel vision now, where I can kind of blank out during a movie. Mm-hmm. But Mm-mm. man, yeah, no the 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 LED notification or the yeah the LED light that's built into most Android phones is much more reasonable and toned down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last thing that I have to talk about in the UI category is um, the system UI tuner, which is um, it's 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 a hidden feature that's been there for I think at least since Android Seven, um, and initially I thought that it was gone uh, in Android Nine, but it's just, there's just a different method that you have to use to go and activate it, and it's a little bit more roundabout to get to it. Um, but what system UI tuner is, um, is it, it, it allows you to do really useful things such as like, um, changing which icons are going to appear on the status bar, the notification bar up at the top. Um, so for example, like, um, I have the, the Bluetooth, uh, icon turned off because like my Bluetooth is always turned on because I have a smartwatch. And thank you, Android. I don't need you to tell me that Bluetooth is turned on right now because I know it's always turned on. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, or like, or or you know, the uh, alarm icon that's that sits over on the right hand side, right? That's there whenever you have any alarm that is coming up any time in the future. <laughs> Yes, Android, I know. There's another one coming up at 8 a.m. tomorrow, just like there was today, just like the day before, and every single day of my life. <laughs> um, you know, so, so you can you can tweak, uh, you know, some of those things to not appear if you don't really need them. Um, and, yeah, System UI Tuner, if you're, if you're obsessed with uh, going and, and customizing your phone, uh, I highly recommend figuring out how to turn that on in version 9. It involves a widget and like a third party launcher and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to look at that. We'll see. Uh, I play probably a little too much Pokemon Go, and that's one mm. top level notification I could get rid of. Yeah, so it it doesn't get rid of the notifications, it just gets rid of like the system level icons that appear over on the right hand side. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have a Pokeball appear there to tell me that there's like a system update whoa that's weird yeah i don't think it's a good thing to have that one show up there (laughs) okay (laughs) all right let's talk about a few new features man we are how long have we been recording and we haven't even talked about like the new features yet (laughs) (laughs) it's been a minute i started mine early but i'm at the two hour mark (laughs) yeah that's (laughs) that's when you know it's a good review yeah yeah Totally. Um, so battery, they have some new tweaks for, for, for the battery. Uh, supposedly now Android. So they've been put, they, they've been talking about AI a lot, yeah. you know, for, for this version of Android. Woo. We're using AI for this and that and everything. And um, one of the things is uh, we're going to figure out like which apps you use most often. And then we'll throttle the background battery usage for all of the other apps cool i don't know if that's exactly ai but like that's a nice algorithm yeah (laughs) now if my battery saver asks me like what is beauty or the meaning of life (laughs) i'll know that we've reached a certain uncanny valley but yeah i mean it's a nice feature and it seems to be working it throttles yeah i agree one of my apps already so it seems really good but i agree that i don't know if it's actually an ai yet (laughs) Mm mm-hmm yeah, the um, 
when, whenever I hear about like the latest new ways that Google is having Android like dial back what apps are allowed to do in the background, I get kind of nervous because I'm like, but what if that's an app that I actually wanted yeah. to be doing stuff in the background uh, and you, you made a, the wrong call? And how am I going to know that you made the wrong call? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so far, I haven't noticed anything going awry, you know? Um, and, and I think I have had longer lasting battery, especially like in standby. You know, when when my phone's just like screen off for a long period of time in my pocket, um, lasts for a long, long, long time. Yeah, as I was saying, I play probably too much Pokemon Go, Mm -hmm. and that'll kill your battery (sighs) real fast. I think I killed my first Pixel from playing too much Pokemon Go (laughs) because I would carry it whenever I went running to go hatch Mm -hmm. eggs. Yeah, and it would get very hot, probably hotter than it was supposed to. And I think I got one of the lucky ones that had a bad weld. And so I had to take ah. my first phone in and they called uh, was it Android support. And they looked at my firmware for a second or about the readout error code. Mm-hmm. And there was just like silence on the other end of the support line for a second. And then the guy was like, give me back to your rep, your sales rep. Okay. He wants to talk to you. And like a few minutes later. Yeah, we're just getting a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just noticed that Usually when I get home from work, I have to immediately put my phone on a charger after mm-hmm. playing. Is that, oh, after playing Pokemon yeah, Go for a for while? for the day, yeah. Yeah. That's just, I'm usually at 10% when I get home. I'm usually at 100 when I leave. But today I'm closer to like 30, 30, 40. Mm-hmm. I was a little lighter on use, but it seems to be averaging a little higher every day. Yeah. Have you gotten uh, the notification that says like, hey... Your battery is starting to get low. It, you know, according to your typical usage rate, it'll probably last until, and then it gives you like a timestamp. Yeah, it was just giving me that a second ago, mm-hmm. and it was telling me if you don't use your phone more, it'll last till eight tomorrow. But it was like yesterday, I was mm. using it, and I forget what I was. I think I was watching a video, and it was like this will last till ten o'clock tonight. So you've got a couple more hours. Yeah, I I find those very very useful. Yeah, um, and. And I like that it, you know, it prompts you like, oh, even though you're still up at like 30% or whatever, if you know that you're going to get home after this time, like, do you want to go into battery saver right now so that you don't run out before you get home? Um, now, for me personally, that's, it's pretty useless because I like, I always have a 20,000 milliamp hour external battery with me <laughs> at all times. So it doesn't matter. Um, but <laughs> Man, I bought the backup battery for going on vacations because I... I went on a New York trip and mm-hmm. forgot to take one, and it died mm. moments after getting off the train. It's like, well, I won't have any photos today. <laughs> but I always forget to take it with me. So I, I really appreciate Battery Saver since then for being able to save it just for like emergency calls or whatever. Yeah. I um, CGP Gray, in a recent podcast episode of his on, I think this was on Cortex, he was talking about like his... The, the the minimum feasible like f- number of things that he can take with him you know and be assured that like yes these are the things that I need um yeah one of one of my things on that list is like a twenty thousand milliamp hour <laughs> battery because I'm ridiculous <laughs> I could yeah I I could like charge uh you know a MacBook off of that thing <laughs> and, uh, and and uh, several times over it would be great. <laughs> just reminds me that i saw a group of hardcore pokemon go players out in the wild Mm -hmm. and they had one of their kids with a backpack that just had a battery pack in it (laughs) and he just had everyone's phone cables coming out of it they were all using that's genius i can't even make fun of you like that's great the other ai thing that they've done is adaptive screen brightness think the so, lord <laughs> yes i i feel like you have much stronger opinions about this so i'll let you take point on this one so i sometimes like to stay up late reading in bed mm-hmm. and so i'll put the screen brightness as low as i can but it seemed like it was never low enough with all the other lights off mm. even with dark modes and everything else i could do and then in sunlight direct sunlight it wasn't bright enough for me to find the brightness button to turn it back up the next day and that just seems to be like a common night to morning issue that i've had been having and the adaptive brightness is so much better now that's something i really missed when i came over from iphone because their adaptive brightness Mm. was really excellent on the last iphone that i had 
Did you did you use Android's like a uh, you know self adjusting brightness setting in the old version of Android? Uh yeah. So the usually what would happen is I would push the on button and I would just see barely like the smallest blink that the screen was technically on, and then it would lighten just enough to see the the brightness wheel, and that's all I could see on my mm. screen before I turned it all the way up. And now I can at least yeah. manually get there without having to kind of do some guessing guesswork. Mm-hmm. So this new screen adaptive brightness is much appreciated. Yeah, I I was pretty satisfied with the uh, self adjusting brightness before. Um, that you know, I mean, I haven't noticed this one like blowing me out of the water the way that you know the way that it is for you. <laughs> um, I'll I'll be really curious to see how my fiance feels about it once her Pixel gets uh, Android nine because like she has does not have the self-adjusting brightness on at all oh. she hates it she she has to have like full manual control over <laughs> uh over the you know the the brightness and so i'm going to i'm definitely going to pressure her into at least trying the new adaptive screen brightness and see how she likes it yeah. um i'm hopeful <laughs> i'm hopeful that it'll satisfy her this one is is really really freaking obscure but uh you can actually rename your device now I'm very excited about this. And see, I didn't um, even realize I hadn't. Where does it show up? Is it like when you plug it in? It's like when, like when other devices are looking at it in on your network, oh, uh, okay. or probably probably over like you know Bluetooth as well. You know, if if somebody is seeing your phone, you know your phone's Bluetooth uh, listed on their list of nearby Bluetooth objects. Um, I think that then the name would appear there. Um, previously, the the only thing that you could really do was like you could rename your device in the like find my phone app but that was just like an internal list for for your purposes right so that you could tell all of your android devices apart when you're looking at you know the all five of your android (laughs) devices that everybody has of course (laughs) um but yeah, I, since I'm obsessive about like naming all of my electronic devices after various weapons uh, from from different fictional things, uh, <laughs> I really like when other people get to see, uh, you know, my my device names. See, I am lame, and I named all my devices just different variations of like the Doom Pooter, the Doom Phone. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> uh, oh, Pooter as in P U T E R. Yeah. Okay, that see that has a very different meaning. <laughs> than my... <laughs> now that I'm saying it out loud, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I uh, got a hold of a label maker one day, so I just labeled things silly Mm-hmm. you. Um, so yeah, now saying it out loud, it sounds a lot sillier. <laughs> I think it works better if you pronounce it pewter. Pewter, pewter. Then we have uh, Digital Wellness, which is currently in beta. Um... Daniel, you said that you haven't tried this out. Is that correct? I hadn't yet. I was just reading yeah, over so, the features, and it seems interesting. Yeah. So this was like, um, I think both both Google and Apple started talking about this like digital well being concept uh, back, you know, like WWDC and Google I/O earlier this year. Um, and so, of course, they were both like doing this in their the betas for their next version of their operating system. Um, and basically, this is like kind of hel- trying to help the user to kind of use their their electronic devices in a more healthy manner because it's very popular right now to like talk about how people are so addicted to their phones and they can't put down their phones. We're creating this entire generation of, you know, kids and young people who don't know how to like interact with each other in real life. Um, that's totally not the case, right? Man who I met on the internet, who I'm video calling yeah. with. And- <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, so, so uh, digital wellness on Android, um, the different features that it has are like things like it'll show you um, a kind of a color wheel of like, okay, this is, this is how much time you have used your phone today. Mm. These are the different apps that you have used as, you know, like sections of a pie chart. Um, the I always laugh when I look at mine because like maps, Google Maps is like my most used app most days because I keep that on 
whenever I'm biking somewhere. <sighs> And I usually and I usually leave maps even if I know where I'm going, right? I'll have maps like navigating me to that place because I can share my location with whoever it is who I'm like going to uh, so that they know when to expect me. Um, but yeah, so maps and Twitter are usually my most uh, used apps. It also tells you like how many times you unlocked your phone in that day and how many notifications you got in that day. Um, and those I, I think are pretty good metrics for like, for gauging how obsessive you are about like using your phone yeah like you could see how many times you check it versus how many times you actually needed to exactly yeah yeah yeah. um and like getting like getting an overwhelming number of notifications is definitely something that i would like to reduce both both for myself but also societally right you know i don't think that we need quite as many notifications as we're getting all the time um so like helping helping the user to see like okay if i go into the twitter app and i can see okay i use this for 58 minutes today i received 93 notifications from twitter today <laughs> um and i opened the app 64 times so like you know that that probably tells me that I receive a lot more notifications from Twitter than um, than is strictly necessary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, like let's compare that to Hangouts, which is you know my my primary like instant messaging platform. I only got thirty three notifications <laughs> from Hangouts today versus ninety three from Twitter. Like I probably use Twitter too much. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, it also will allow you to like set a timer for a uh for for different apps which is basically like parental control settings for an adult yeah Yeah. Yeah. um i definitely am not going to start using that that part of this app because like i feel like i have enough self-control to like once i have the data to know like oh i'm getting you know i'm using twitter a whole bunch maybe i should dial it back I can, you know, I can self-control and dial it back. Um, the thing I do really appreciate, though, is the wind-down mode, um, where you can tell it, like, okay, if I want to go, for example, I want to, like, go to bed by 10 p.m. Um, starting at, like, 9 p.m., I can have my phone uh, set itself to, like, grayscale and uh, turn on do not disturb um, so that, like grayscale in particular is like okay you know so so that my phone is less appealing to use right there's less like colorful happy things that are going to distract me while i'm using it um and i i like it i i'm i've been trying it out and and i think i'm going to keep that setting um on my phone uh and i especially like that it it doesn't punish me for doing things such as like reading an ebook mm. right because that's already grayscale right it's already just white text on a black background so that feels perfectly normal whereas like opening up something else like like twitter it's like okay well these pictures are all like ugly now and i don't want to look at them so maybe i'll wait until morning mm. yeah and see does that interfere with the nighttime setting where things kind of already turn like a sepia the, uh, it it can go at the same time okay yeah um and actually interesting note uh i tried taking a screenshot while it was in like grayscale mode um and then i sent it to my fiance whose phone of course is not in grayscale and it was still full color so it's like it's applying this grayscale at some point in the stack after like wherever it is that android takes its screenshot Hmm. Like so, so it renders a full color version of it, and then it turns it into grayscale. So actually, this makes me think that like the grayscale probably is more taxing on the battery than not grayscale, since it has to like go through that extra step of like taking this color thing and turning it into, yeah. But hopefully, if you're if you're in wind down mode and you're about to go to bed, right, yeah. you're probably not too far away from your charger anyway. Yeah, I wonder if that's only affecting the screen itself. I don't know. I wonder if that's kind of a if it kind of if it's a net zero on the battery usage. Then I I don't think it can be. I don't think it's like a hardware based thing okay. because like you know your phone and my phone have different screens. Um, Google doesn't know what kind of screen other you know device manufacturers are going to be using on their phones. 
Um, and presumably this is going to be a feature that like rolls out to any Android phone running Android 9. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think it, it's got to be a software thing, which means that there is going to be some performance, you know, hit. Yeah. That makes sense. I will say I probably could use parental controls for myself when it comes to like <laughs> Netflix and Hulu. Mm. Like if it could just count how many episodes I've watched and be like, it's after your bedtime and you've already watched two, <laughs> you, you really need to go to bed. Yeah. I could kind of appreciate yeah. that. But I almost need that more on like my PlayStation or my computer than I do my phone. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then and then you just kind of get into this like game that you're playing with yourself where it's like, Well, I know that I use Netflix too much on my phone, so I'm just gonna go to my computer instead <laughs> right now and <laughs> which isn't gonna punish me. Um one annoying thing about digital wellness is that like, yeah, it's got this this great useful like dashboard where it shows you how much time you've been using all these apps and stuff, but in order to see that you have to like go into your system settings and then go into the digital wellness section of the system settings and then go into your dashboard to see that. Yeah. And, um, luckily I found a, an app that like makes digital wellness available to the launcher. So you can have it listed in your all apps, you know, and you can put it on your home screen if you want to and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, because Chris Lacey is a wonderful developer and, uh, and you know, he knows exactly what I need for my Android device. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say that because I also use the, uh, the launcher that he makes, um, uh -huh. and I like it a lot. There's also a couple of features that they don't have in Android 9. Um, App Slices was one that, that they had been talking a lot about, um, but it's not available yet. I think it's coming later this fall. And App Slices is where, like, like an app developer can make a certain part of their app like available to be displayed in other places. So like, what was their example? I think their example was like, if you're doing a search, like a Google search or like maybe in maps or whatever for like a location or something like that, um, like Lyft uh, could like surface a, a thing as like one of the search results, right? Um, that says like, oh, hey, if you want to get a lift to this place, this is how long it would take you to get there. This is how much it would cost. Um, and so like basically that's the, the Android system like pulling that information directly from the Lyft app, even though the Lyft app is not like the one that is currently open. Um, and then displaying it in whatever context you're currently in. Huh. That's really cool. Yeah. So then if you had, say, Lyft and Uber and like Austin rides share whatever it is. Could you then yeah. see cost for each one then individually? Possibly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I guess it would, it would have to depend on like which, which of those three actually pays attention to the latest Android updates and implements, you know, app slices. Cause I, I don't think that this is something that can function without the app developers targeting the new version of the API. Okay. But yeah. That's very cool. Um, and I, and I don't know, like, super well how it works because I haven't gotten to try it because it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. No, I was just reading through where they were showing examples of how it could work. I was mm -hmm. like, well, that seems interesting. Yeah, and, and I wonder what kind of work other, like, so, so there's obviously the work that an app developer has to do in order to get their slices to be available to appear in other places. But also there's probably some work that app developers would have to do in order to allow slices to be to appear in their own app in intelligent places. Mm, yeah. Um, unless it's unless Google's uh, like intention here is just to show slices in system apps, right? That Google themselves have made. But that seems that seems sleazy, you know. Yeah. Then again, I wouldn't totally put it past Google. Not in like a bad way, <laughs> but I've noticed there's times where it'll highlight text in like an email. It's like, do you want to search Amazon for that kind of stuff? I don't think that's a, a perfect mm -hmm. example, but something like that. Like, or do you want to search this address that's in this text message that you got? Yeah. So I could see yeah, more. and that's more about. Yeah, and I think that's more about like the Android system being able to recognize that like, oh, this text that you have is an, an address. I know some, some apps that can use addresses nicely. Yeah. And so I, 
I wonder if they'll just start implementing slowly more commercial applications for those kinds mm-hmm. of data. I don't know. I did notice, is it anything like, so when I swipe up to the all apps menu, mm-hmm. I do have some options now just below the quick search. So I, I have a call my brother and call my wife quick tabs. Right. Is it going to be something like that where it may show you like an app you might use? Yeah, I think it's, I think those are related things, but um, it seems like on a technical level they're separate because like that feature is available now, whereas yeah. app slices is not. Yeah. Well, an app slices that, seem that different. One, yeah. Like, like surfacing different actions from uh, an app to show it in the all apps list, I think that seems more like like a widgets type thing, you know? Because, like, yeah. before before this version of Android, I could uh, put an icon on my home screen that is just, like, a shortcut to call a particular person, um, a particular contact. And so that, like, I feel like that's drawing from the same kind of technical concept as, as the widgets. That makes sense. They're just adding yeah. a new place for widgets to be... Yeah, Basically. without you having to intentionally go and like place the widgets there. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh the last thing that I have written down here is um I was under the impression that like the rotate screen behavior was going to be changed um cuz c- currently what we have is like you either can have the screen rotate or the the your setting is either like the screen will rotate when I flip the device or the screen will not rotate when I flip the device. Yeah. Um, and what I, what I had seen, what I thought I had seen was going to be the new version was like, if I rotate the screen, it won't rotate the display by default, but it'll pop up with a little icon like in the corner uh, of like the navigation bar, right? And it would, and it would have like that would be like a toggle that would say like, oh, if you hit this, like it'll go into landscape mode, and if you tap it again, it'll like bring us back into portrait mode, and you know, um, and I can't really decide which which version I like better, <laughs> the current version or the possible other one. Man, I would love a toggle, especially a a navigation buttons toggle. That'd be perfect for me. My problem is I apparently, I don't know if it's just the way I hold my phone or if it's just the way I sit, but it tries to toggle landscape view at the wrong, at all the wrong possible times for me. Hmm. And so it'd be great if even I could just tell it, yes, go to landscape now manually. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, because I keep my, my rotate toggled off pretty much all the time unless I'm going to be watching a video or something. Yeah, I uh, I have mine on because i don't i don't usually have a problem with it like rotating when i don't want it to except for when i'm biking um because the the phone mount that i have for it um especially now that i have a bike that doesn't have shocks on the front fork uh right it's it shakes the handlebars around a lot and so like the phone will sometimes like jiggle itself into being like sideways and i'm like no 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 (laughs) I did actually need that to stay vertical. So that's like the the one time that I have to remember to set it to not auto rotate is when I'm about to go biking. It seems like it happens the worst. Um I'm trying to think. I think it's like when I'm in Twitter and I'm just sitting there looking at it on my phone. I like, guess I think it's just the way I keep my hand held. It's just enough to activate it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll flip it back mm-hmm. to straight and it won't go back for a few seconds. And then we sit there fighting each other <laughs> until I just turn it off. Yeah, I remember when like Samsung, and this was probably back in like 2013 or 14 or something like that, where they were like, yeah, our newest phone is going to intelligently like rotate the screen if it if it sees like if it sees your face, it'll basically like follow the orientation of your face instead of following the orientation of the phone. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. You know, like, if I'm laying on my side in bed, it'll know that, like, oh, even though the phone is sideways, my face is also sideways. So just, like, keep keep the screen looking, looking normal. <laughs> All right. Daniel, do you have any final thoughts uh, about Android 9 for us? Man, final thoughts. Overall impressions? 
I think overall, besides a little bit of a learning curve to some of the new features, it feels very natural. Mm -hmm. I think a couple, like the weird little UI changes, those might get changed here soon anyway. Uh, I like the new brightness and sound settings. Um... I don't know, besides how I shouldn't close apps all the time, like I do, and I would be looking forward to that rotate feature, it's a pretty good update for me. Yeah. Yeah, I I think in terms of, like, the brand new features that they introduced, I really, really like them. Um, The UI changes, I'm a little bit more, you know, hit or miss on those. Um, Some of them I really like, like the uh, volume, you know, slider changes, I really like those. Um, But other ones I like less um yeah i'll get used to it that you know that's <laughs> that's that's the thing is you know every year it's like oh they changed a thing and i gotta relearn how it works but you know this this too shall pass so <laughs> at least it didn't you know brick my device yeah that's, no exactly. that's a plus <laughs> with how many just strange programs i sideload i'm very happy that <laughs> this update nothing broke outright no trips to the yeah. store and I, I can't think of like um you know a major update to android where that has happened to me but for some reason this time i was like i was a little bit worried about that possibly happening probably probably because like i'm using a smartwatch that is no longer software supported you know <laughs> so like if something goes wrong uh i'm out of luck and i just gotta buy a new phone or a new watch I was going to say, I still keep a, a laptop that's on an old version of Windows and my original iPod so I can update them. Even though I don't use either ah. of them, I I was worried <laughs> about them getting software, uh, getting updated out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Daniel, where can where can people find you on the internet? Oh, man. I'm over on Twitter, at Gwair, G-Y-W-A-I-R. And I'm also on the Double Issue podcast. Which I am uh, currently making my way through the backlog of. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I'm on, yeah, I think I'm on like episode six now or something. I don't know. I, I just got past um, the first the first world, world build where you had a guest on. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fun show. And it was a fun show to be on as well. <laughs> I guessed it on there once. We uh, finally... I think we've got another week, but we're going to finally use the prompt you gave us for a story. Okay. We've been doing some... We So it's a fiction podcast, and we've been doing kind of a catch-up. We've been going back through every hero and making sure everyone has their own villain mm. and kind of doing a reminder of who everybody is and what's going on in the world. So it's been kind of interesting, because usually we tell stories every week or every other week. And then do a world build. But we've just been doing world build for like the last month or so as we get caught up. Mm. But yeah. Hopefully we'll have some more. And yeah, that Oh, good. That that was the reason that I uh went back and started from the beginning, uh, was because I, I was listening to some of the stories and I was like, I am actually missing a, enough context here <laughs> that I think I should listen to some of the older stories and find out like, oh yeah, what was like what was the deal with the Martians or, you know, whoever um how do they fit into this universe (laughs) um yeah so uh i'm ian r buck you can find me on twitter as ian r buck uh second opinion is a production of the nexus tv you can find us on uh, twitter at the nexus tv um or uh if you want to discuss this episode with uh, other listeners you can go to our subreddit at the nexus r slash the nexus tv Um, This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so if you want to use anything that we said here, uh, feel free to use it as as you like, as long as you link back to the original page, which was uh, thenexus.tv slash SO47. Um, And since this is our review show and we are always looking for new stuff to review, um, hit us up and and let us know what you would like us to review. If you you, bought a new phone or you got a cool app that you would like to review or um we do we we review uh fun like pieces of media as well like uh last last episode we were reviewing bubble which is a fictional podcast um yeah let us know uh i love having guests on and uh remember that no matter where you're listening 
you should definitely go and subscribe to Second Opinion Reviews in your favorite podcast player, because that's where you'll get all of the episodes first. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.